This is Cash Cahey, and I'm looking forward to my conversation with Derek today about my new book, Eight Leader Types in the White House. Discover and leverage your Oval Office leadership style. Welcome to the Business Leadership Series, where we engage with leaders who are making an impact on their worlds and who want to share their knowledge and experience for your personal and professional growth. The following interview is designed to inspire you to become the best leader you can be. Your host, Derek Champagne, is the founder and CEO of The Artist Evolution, a full-service agency building successful brands, marketing tools, and campaigns, and also the author of the best-selling book, Don't Buy a Duck. And now, let's begin today's Leadership Series interview. Welcome to the Business Leadership Series, where our goal is to inspire you to become the best leader that you can be. Our guest today is Cash Cahey. I want to read a little bit of his bio. I'm excited. He's got a new book that's coming out, and I've got it right here in my hand, and it applies so much to our topics on our show about being an intentional leader. Cash is a global leader architect with a natural gift for engaging audiences, facilitating learning and coaching leaders to greater effectiveness. He has a degree in marketing as well as an MBA from the University of Houston, 23 professional years a career inside global fortune 500 companies with diverse functions and industries has given him different corporate cultures with different styles of leadership and through these experiences he has realized a symbiotic relationship between leadership and culture that leaders create a culture around them but in order to succeed must lead in a culture that values their uniqueness something we all struggle with we all address over the past 18 years cash has facilitated leadership workshops in 20 countries on six continents including the elements of leadership workshop to help leaders visualize and better implement the fundamentals of leading cash welcome to our show today thanks very much derek i'm really glad to be here You've got this new book, The Eight Leader Types in the White House. But first, and we're going to talk about that because I'm so curious as to what motivated you to write this book and kind of the principles inside it. But let's start, let's go back a little bit. Kind of tell us about some of your early years and a couple of highlights so that our listeners can get to know you a little bit. Sure. Uh, So after that undergraduate in marketing at the University of Houston, I landed my first job in sales. And, And I think this is where my first leadership lesson came from. I, I realized I was not a salesman, <laughs> Derek, <laughs> but I realized I could be influential. And I think what it showed me is throughout my life, I've had to be learning, uh, growing, uh, realizing what works, what doesn't work. I went on to a successful career in, in marketing, uh, did some strategic planning, uh, and even led an enterprise-wide culture change initiative. So have had a lot of experience with leaders and taught leaders and, again, around the world. Um, And I I just come to the idea that self-awareness is really what it's all about, or at least is the foundation. Um, And, and, you know, Warren Bennis, I believe, said, the single greatest source of leadership failure is the lack of Um, self-awareness. And really being aware of your personality type, your, of course, your values, uh, you know, what are your talents? What do you do well? And what do you not do well? Um, that figures into this, uh, you know, book and, and my whole philosophy. Um, and so, yeah, very excited to, to share with you about that. You know, I, I, and that's great. And, I, you know, we being self-aware for me, when I became aware that I would needed to be self-aware was a big moment for me. And then, I, but actually it was really scary too. We said, okay, I just found several things that I'm not the greatest at, like I told myself. So now yeah. what? So a couple of things. One is how do you be self-aware? And then number two is what next? Yeah. And, and so there's some great research out there uh, on self-awareness, recent stuff that's been done that I highly recommend. And I, I, I'm blanking on her name, but one of her premises is that self-awareness is both internal and external. And, and I think there you have where the difference between being introverted and extroverted uh, can come into play in terms of your self-awareness. If I'm extrovertedly self-aware, I'm understanding what other people think of me. I'm understanding how I'm perceived, what I'm, you know, and so my savvy is going outwardly about myself. If I'm more introverted, then I'm more knowing myself, my center, my being, who am I, uh, what am I about? And, and I think both are necessary. 
Um, and interestingly that you ask, but I've created a website, uh, leadertype.com, where I invite leaders in to do a series of self-assessments for the, for the reason of reflection, to understand what their triggers are, uh, what drives their leadership, uh, even has a 360 where they can get feedback from their team. So I think all of it really combines to help you understand yourself. And you know, Derek, that before I can manage others, I've got to first manage myself. And I can't manage myself if I don't understand myself. So. It's so powerful. And I mean, when, when I hear it now, it's, it makes so much sense. But, you know, I, I owned several companies and went for years without really assessing myself. I did something last year in, in a personal assessment. And I look forward to looking at yours. And we, we sent it out to a sample of people that I knew. And one of the questions was, what do you see my blind spots as? And where can I improve in areas that I may not be aware of? I got to tell you, I got 20, 20 to 30 answers back from around the country. And they, a lot of them were the same. People did not know each other. They shared things about me. And it hurt. I, I remember sitting on the couch <laughs> on this weekend just mad. And my <laughs> wife said, Derek, you asked, you put the survey together and you asked people to give you feedback. What did you expect? But wow, yes. we, we don't know what we don't know. And I, I was just suddenly knew some of my blind spots. And that was actually really powerful, too. Very powerful, Derek. And I love the quote, we don't see the world as it is. We see the world as we are. We, can, we can't help but see the world through our lens. And that's what I identified in these eight leader types, that these are eight perspectives on the world. They're not just eight ways of leading. There are eight ways that you interpret reality. And that is so important for a leader to understand, A, how am I geared? How am I oriented to understand my reality? What am I going to notice first? What am, what's going to be my immediate take? But like you said, what's my blind spot? What am I, because of my personality type, going to naturally miss, overlook, and, and be my Achilles heel? And I think that's something I want to bring for leaders to understand is what they're good at, what their strength is, uh, but what they're, you know, to help them reduce that biggest blind spot. Great. And I love that you provide a, a resource for, for people to do an assessment. That's so important to start. Uh, so, you know, before we get into the book, because I'm, I'm so curious, but let's let's talk for just a few more minutes. What? And then I want to talk about the presidential side of things, because I'm so curious about the, the motivation behind that. But what is a great leader to you? Um, wow. Uh, there are so many components to what makes someone a great leader. I've chosen to focus, and I want to acknowledge this, I've chosen to focus in on their personality type mm. and how I believe that drove their style. I can even point to examples of where it drove their decisions and even the decision of where to drop the atomic bomb. I go into detail in, you know, with Harry Truman and how he was missing a certain perspective on that decision. So great leadership, you know, there's competence, there's character, uh, there's uh, the ability to engage people, you know, and, and to really inspire and lift people. Uh, there, there's so many. And, and, you know, from all of the research that I did on, on what is, you know, some people reduce it down to like 120 qualities mm -hmm. or the 21 things that you need. You see, it, it is such a broad subject. I think it's also incredibly subjective. Mm -hmm. We see leaders that we relate to, I think, largely because either they feel something that we're not or uh, they we resonate with them because they're very similar to us. And so um, but underlying it all, I would say, is 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 character uh, is uh, just the ability to to know yourself and and lead from that authentic self. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the prompting from us to even have this discussion, which I'm excited about, and your team shared with us, which really grabbed me. It's a question every one of us has likely asked ourselves over the past year. What exactly does it mean to be very presidential? And no matter whom we voted for in 2016, and the answer yep. is redefining itself daily. And there's no question, regardless who you voted for, that we're in one of the most polarizing times with social media, with, with everything, uh, for the position to be even more hyper-focused on than ever. And there's yeah. not a day that goes by that the news and I'm I'm in the in the media buying business for part of what we do and there's not a day go by it goes by that it's not a challenge to get something covered because it's covered with this national presidential news. First of all, why this book? Eight leader types yeah. in the White House. <laughs> why? 
part of it was that I found a book that I reference, uh, that I used and, and was able to get the data for, uh, that was written about 13 years ago called personality, character and leadership in the white house. Psychologists assess the presence mm-hmm. by, uh, Foschenbauer and Rubenzer. I want to give them credit, uh, because they got historians who knew presidents the best to do a psychological assessment. And I'm talking about a 240 item questionnaire, uh, all kinds of uh, surveys. So you get the picture. I'm what I'm reporting out is what they found, not my subjective opinion about, you know, who uh, should be a a great leader or their. And I converted those uh, assessments, those uh, the data from their surveys into a Myers-Briggs type. Mm. That's the the basis. And and the question that I had gotten in one of my classes was, because personality type is part of the leadership curriculum that I I teach, uh, so tell me, Cash, what type makes the best leader? (laughs) And I'm like, you know, and when you're teaching, whether it's four types or eight types or 16 types, everyone, you know, if you're not that type and and that's the type that's the best leader, you're kind of, you know, sad (laughs) and and not – (laughs) <laughs> feeling a little defeated here, you know, in my potential as a leader. And I didn't believe that kind of instinctively, um, but I didn't have the data to back it up. Mm. So I got a hold of their data, and here's the conclusion, that in the top 10 presidents of all time, and by the way, that's become very political as well, hasn't right. it? Oh, Just yes. ranking presidents. So I went back to 1982 before things had gotten in in, in that list. Liberals and conservatives agreed on nine out of the top ten. And guess what? These eight are in that nine. And not only that, they were eight very different personality types. So I don't care if you call them great or near great or whatever, but among these exceptional, you know, leaders of our country are eight very diverse ways of leading. And that's why I came up with leader types and I focused on presidential leadership because, you know, in the corporate world, uh, CEOs, uh, other people are put into positions by either the board of directors and they're they're managers. But the question is, are they really a leader? Mm. And in this case, the reason I chose presidential leadership is because people voted for these people. (laughs) They Mm. willingly followed their lead. Right. And, and you see what I mean? That's very powerful to me, that this wasn't by decree or, or you know, imposition on you. This is someone that you chose to follow. So That's yeah. great. I really like that it's data-driven, may I dare say bipartisan, because that's going political and it shouldn't be. But let's dig in a little bit. You, I mean, this is amazing, the character traits of American history's greatest leaders within a period of time and, and how those traits define them. Give us some highlights. If, if our, I want to take the remainder of our time and really, really dig in a little bit. And what can the, what can our listeners expect when they engage with this book? When they pick it up, what are they, what are they going to experience? Yeah. So they're going to get my take on leadership in the first chapter, where I define it and understand it, and even apply it then to these, you know, eight great leaders. They're going to get my take on personality type. And let me just say here that unlike a lot of systems, I believe that you are not just one of these eight types. You are all eight of them. And that's very Jungian, uh, actually, Jungian psychology, Carl Jung's book, Psychological Types. And what I mean by that is the type should never define, label, or limit you. It is just a way to sort out all the the ways of leading. And and so I want to get that across Um, and and just give you a couple of of snippets and – So there are four extroverted types, four introverted types, Um, and and let me just do a contrast here. Uh, Theodore Roosevelt was what I call the take charge leader type. Uh, He was about execution, delegation. He was a crusader who was very principled. he, 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 and he was just so extroverted. It's, uh, and I am fascinated by personality type. And when you read the biographies that I did and, and the quotes and, the, you know, all the things about them. One of my favorites about Teddy Roosevelt, and this is something his nephew said about him, said, Uncle Teddy wants to be the bride at every wedding and the corpse at every funeral. <laughs> uh, he, was, <laughs> he lived large. He was a – and he wanted, a, you know, to have an impact. Right. Um, 
the, the common theme, I will tell you one common theme, Derek, I found in all of them was ambition. They wanted it. Um, someone, some of them a little more reluctantly, like Harry Truman, who inherited it uh, uh, because of the death of FDR. But still, they were from an early age wanting to be that or, and following leaders. George Washington actually studied people, studied people, he had leaders he admired and took notes and made uh, really uh, an assessment of himself, which was very much in line with his prudent leader type. Um, Abraham Lincoln, I believe it's because of Abraham Lincoln's personality type that we are even having this conversation in this country today. I think a lot of people don't realize how far gone the country was. And, and the, several of the states had already seceded. His State of the Union was walking a narrow line trying to keep in the you know some other states which left. He was in an uphill battle, and his, a very introverted feeling type person, um, his inclusive leadership, he was inclusive with what it meant to be an American. He was inclusive that, you know, the South should be part of the North, you know, part of the country. Uh, And he was inclusive, you know, the book written about him, Team of Rivals. He was inclusive with respect to his cabinet. Um, Those qualities are are what are called for, uh, particularly, I believe, in conflict, because he was so good at listening and trying to bridge and find common ground. And I guess, Derek, I, you know, that's the other point I would make, is part of why I believe these leaders were great was because what was most needed at that time was what they brought to bear, uh, was coming out of them naturally in their personality type. That's awesome. I, I love, I'm glad you wrote this book. I, first of all, is thank you. <laughs> so many leadership books out there, but this one is, is different and, and I like it. I mean, there's some great ones out there, but I, I love how this one is the approach that you took here, the, the data driven, how you, how you pulled it in and even, even tie it back together with, with yeah. the, the opportunity to have all of those eight leader types within you. And if I could add just a recommendation to, to listeners, um, before reading the book, uh, go out and do the assessment, leadertype.com. I almost wish that in the ebook there had been a way that you could do the assessment and then the chapters, the eight chapters on the eight different leaders, would have been in the order that the assessment reveals is your order um, of – you know, dominance and predominance in your person. Do you see what I mean? And my point is, if you're going to go out and read a biography of a leader, good for you, but make sure it's a leader of your leader type. And that's what I'm hoping with this book is that new and emerging leaders read a chapter and they get motivated to read more about that leader and understand them at an even deeper level. Mm, that's great. It, it, we're going to give a plug for where to where to find the book and just made it. But any other leadership principles you want to share, or any final thoughts you want to share with our listeners? I, you know, I believe that that leadership is about moving people, and and I think it begins with self leadership, but on a broader level, it's about moving people from where they are to where they've never been, mm-hmm. and you've really got to understand not only yourself but others. And what you need to be in the situation to move them. And, and so that's one of my other f- fundamental uh, principles about leadership is understanding your followers. And I believe that that's a very important relationship between leadership and followership. Mm, I love it. I mean, this show is, is the leadership business leadership series, being an intentional leader. We're always looking for ways to be more intentional, to be proactive, and to be humble, and to look at ourselves and look inward. So I love that you have the uh, leadertype.com where you can go and take a personal assessment. The book, Eight, leadership t- Eight Leader Types in the White House, Discover and Leverage Your Oval Office Leadership Style. Cash, where can we find your book? It's on Amazon, uh, and also go to my website, and there's a link to the Amazon uh, purchase there. Uh, so join me uh, there on LinkedIn, uh, and uh, yes, I'm all about helping others be more intentional. And that's the other final thing I would say, Derek, is that once you learn what these eight leader types are and the situations in which they are called for, It's like you can be much more intentional about choosing who do I need to be in this situation 
to be most effective. So thank you for the opportunity, Derek. I love that. Cash Cahey, again, thank you for being with us. It's a pleasure. I love learning from your, your years of leadership experience, great experience. And, and thank you again for writing this book. And our listeners, go to leadertype.com and learn more about Cash or connect with him on LinkedIn. Cash, I look forward to staying in touch and watching the next great things that you do. Thank you, Derek, very much. You've been listening to the Business Leadership Series, where we engage with leaders who are making an impact on their worlds and who want to share their knowledge and experience for your personal and professional growth. This interview was designed to inspire you to become the best leader you can be. The Business Leadership Series is brought to you by The Artist Evolution, an aspirational agency creating memorable brands and marketing campaigns. Learn more at marketingstrategyhero.com.